Hello there, welcome to the Daily FX Weekly Preview. Well, before we delve into the market drivers for next week, let's check in on how the markets are shaping up to close this Friday, July 21st. So as you can see there, we are firmly entrenched in the red this Friday afternoon. We've got around half a percent down for London and more so for the bourses on the mainland there, 1.6% down for Germany and around 1.4% for France. Well, talking of Europe, on Monday, there is a whole raft of PMI data from France, Germany and the Eurozone. We've got Nick Corley, our analyst here, who just explains everything technically for us in terms of the charts and so forth. Um, as I say, there is a slew, if you like, of all this PMI data that's coming out on Monday. Um, I'd like, if we can, to look at the euro dollar and just how yeah. it might be impacted mm -hmm. by these data releases. So, OK, we're looking at the chart now. Let's have a look. This is the daily chart just here. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand these numbers normally come out at about 8.45, so we'll have them very early in the morning. Do you think that they will be a driver or not necessarily? Uh, yeah, I think they are. I think uh, first, thing, you know, first thing on Monday when they're sort of coming out, yeah, this is going to be the, the, first, um, the first one for uh, FX traders to look at. Mm. Uh, June's figures were slightly lower than expected. I think mm. the service sector wasn't particularly strong. Um, the numbers this, uh, this month are expected around the same. You know, the PMIs are still quite high and, and indicate growth of Q2 growth about 0.6 or 0.7. Mm -hmm. um, any disappointment on the downside and you could see the, the euro week. I mean, as you can see from the chart there, it's, it's, the euro is still pretty strong, especially against the dollar. Week? Yeah, I mean the euro is the euro is strong, and in this pair, and the, and the U.S. dollar is weak. Mm. Uh, so consequently, you're getting to you know highs. If you maybe look at the uh, weekly chart, yeah. you're, gonna, you're looking at highs which go back for the best part of a, a yeah, best part of a year now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean the euro is the euro is strong, and it's. Uh, as I said, it's, it's being helped. This pair is being helped by US dollar weakness as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely the PMIs. These the first look at these PMIs is going to be important. It's this April 2015 bit, isn't it? Here. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, that's, my arrow exactly. There. I mean, that's when they had sort of quite a big, uh, big fall. Uh, and if you if you take the gap up to there, I mean, you're, you're talking around the 122, 123 level, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. way back there. So. You know, it's not good news for Mario Draghi if he wants a bit more inflation. I think we were all really confused this week. We were like, what is going on? Why is it gaining so much? Yeah, it doesn't I think make it's just much sense. I think it's just expectations. Markets are expecting something to happen. And if it you know, hasn't happened this, uh, this meeting, maybe next meeting or the meeting afterwards, there'll be talk. Mm -hmm. OK, let's talk about domestic news because we're watching the UK preliminary GDP reading. That's after the British economy suffered a sharp slowdown in the opening months of the year, falling to 0.2% in the first quarter from 0.7% in the previous. Uh, we're going to look at cable for this one. Um, what are you expecting in terms of the GDP for Britain? Um, I can't see any reason uh, for it to really go too much higher than 0.2, maybe 0.3%. Yeah, the UK economy is now being affected by Brexit. Um, we are having a slowdown. Um, the retail sales figures this week were slightly better than expected, but not by a great deal. Only by a very yeah, small but by a fraction. Um, and I think cable is, is is struggling at the moment, even against a weak US dollar. If you look at this week, we come down from about 131 to 129.80. Um, struggling. I think there's a 120. There's a bit of support. One. 29.30, then around the 128.12 mm -hmm. on the downside. Um, the upside target there, 131.5. It's going to take some pretty good numbers to hit that. It's still come a long way though from here. Oh yeah, I mean it's 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 you know we've we've had a rally and and again a lot of this again is 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 based on U.S. dollar weakness. It's mm -hmm. not just this because you know, the pound is not particularly strong. It's U.S. dollar weakness mm -hmm. with a little bit of uh, strength in the pound. Well, we are going to talk about the U.S. dollar weakness just now because it's a huge week for the U.S. because we do have the Fed's interest rate decision mm -hmm. and the publication of their GDP report as well. So, and what's your view heading into the Fed decision? Because it's probably the biggest event of the week. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's also, I mean, if you, if you like data, if you like numbers next week, uh, there is an absolute mass of them, as you mentioned early on. And in the US, you've still got, you've got durable goods, you've got consumer confidence, uh, along with the, uh, the Fed meeting and the, uh, the Fed rate decision and GDP. Um, 
Uh, we are looking for GDP uh, second quarter to pick up to maybe around the 2.6%, mm -hmm. which is uh, better than the, I think the first quarter is 1.4. So a bit more strength in the economy, but not really the sort of the 3% that people are talking about that will start to warrant additional hikes. Mm -hmm. And also on Monday, it's worth mentioning, it's the UK-US free trade deal talks as well, they begin. Right, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we, we have to keep, keep an eye on things like, you know, all, all, any noise coming out of Brexit discussions as well. I've got the US dollar basket up. Yeah, well, if you can see, I mean, we're talking about dollar weakness, and if you can see it's come down from around 102, 103 level. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now down to sort of a, a one, one and a bit year low, just under 94. Um, I think the low on the chart, if it goes back a bit further, is around the 93.2 level. So we're really close to that. Uh, you may find some support there, but the, the US dollar is weak. All the problems with Trump, you know, saying one thing about uh, the health care bill and changing two mm. days later, trouble with Trump Jr. and the Russian lawyers. Oh, it's all going on. <laughs> um, let's change our tune. We're going to talk about Bitcoin. Oh, right. Yeah, uh, because it had a momentous slump last weekend. We've seen impressive gains, though, in the aftermath. And now we're looking at all-time highs once again. Yeah, it's, um, it's all on this, um, this, this talk about there's going to be this potential split, yeah. you know, the, the, this hard fork. It seems that, you know, these different protocols that they're going to be using, but it seems that's all been averted. Um, yesterday, uh, you can see on that chart there, the, you had a, a, a trading range of 26%, you know, in a day on a currency, uh, on a, even on a digital currency. I mean, that's, that's incredible volatility. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what traders like about this particular product. It is volatile. It gives you something to trade. Mm -hmm. You know, the price now, is, uh, as you can show on that chart, it's, it's gone above the 20, 50, and 100-day uh, moving averages, another sort of bullish sign. Um, it's a bit like Donald Trump. <laughs> Just all that. <laughs> um, um, I've never heard it considered that one, but yes, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the $3,000 high, yeah, it looks under pressure. Um, but again, with one of these things, it's a product really that you need to practice trading because it is so volatile. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something just to jump into, even if you're an experienced trader from, say, uh, stocks or indexes or. Um, normal currency pairs because it is so volatile so it, it's really worthwhile sort of having a look around seeing if you can practice trade it for a bit get an idea mm -hmm. but as I said it's 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 one for the traders at the moment yeah it's really popular I'm oh, speaking to people much. all the time that invested in Bitcoin yeah. and there's just a real hype about it yeah I mean it, it's 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 the you know the underlying technology blockchain is the technology of the future mm -hmm. so. that's so um, right, I just want to conclude while I've got mm. you here in terms because next week is stuffed with data, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be absolutely. really busy. There's so many market drivers. But what is there anything else that you're looking at? I think, as I said, we were talking about there, the consumer, U.S. consumer confidence, U.S. Uh, durable goods. Mm -hmm, You've got mm -hmm, the uh, mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, PMIs. As I said, if you like numbers mm. and you like updating your Excel sheet and stuff like that, next week is is just absolutely round, especially in the U.S. Uh, Quite a lot going on in Europe and, and a little bit in the UK, but there's a lot of data out. So and also on drivers. Monday morning, before even the European markets open, it's the Bank of Japan's meeting minutes. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, the Bank of Japan sort of admitting that inflation is not going the way that they want it, and it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, no yeah. surprise there, though, really. No, not, not, not so much, but... Uh, They've, they've thrown a fair bit at it so far. Mm. All right, Nick, thank you very much indeed. And just to let you know as well, in terms of corporate data, there's so many companies. We've got the techs, the utilities. We've got the UK banks as well also reporting. There's a lot going on. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope that was helpful. And do join me on Monday for the European Outlook once again.